Good morning all. Welcome to the online NTA Net Coaching Program organized by the Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. Hope you all are fine and safe. Let us begin today's session with the freshness and energy that we gathered in the past few days amid the pandemic crisis. In this auspicious occasion, we have with us an eminent person, Dr. Amal Kumar, Postdoctoral post Research Fellow of Department of Commerce, University of Kerala, under the guidance of Dr. Vasant Gobal, Professor and Director, ID, University of Kerala. Um, uh, today, we will be dealing with the paper to Commerce paper, Business Economics. We hope that we all will be enriched with your valuable session. Once again, I extend my warm welcome to Dr. Amal Kumar and all participants on behalf of me and Department of Commerce to this online NTA net coaching program. Over to you, sir. You may please start your session. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. A hey, warm good morning, all of you. I think I am audible to everyone. The topic of this today's uh, session is business economics. The topic is very familiar to everyone because we learned a paper called Managerial Economics in our BCom course. The topic is very easy and uh, I'm straight away I'm moving to uh, my presentation. Before starting my presentation, I request every participants, please take your own norms along with the presentation. Uh, this will help you. For Hello, your... sir. Hello. Sir, one thing, welcome, but you're not. Okay, just on. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's audible. Now audible. Now I am audible. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Can you see the slides? The slides is visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Before start the presentation, uh, I request every participant, please take your own notes, uh, lecture note that will help you for your further preparation. Then the topic is very easy, the business economics. This is a theoretical paper and uh, this is your syllabus that is freely available in your UGC website. And uh, I am moving to uh, the business economics before starting the business economics i just talk about what is economics the economics come from an ancient greek word economicos or economia the word greek word economicos or economia the economia or economicos literally translate or literal meaning is the task of managing a household the task of managing a household is the literary meaning of the word economia. It is a Greek word. From that Greek word, the word economics is derived. Then I am moving to some definitions, some famous definitions relating to economics. The first one is the economy is the art of making most of life. This definition is given by George Bernard Shaw. The economy is the art of making most of life. This definition is given by George Bernard Shaw. And the second definition is the economics is a science of wealth. Economics is a science of wealth. This definition is called wealth definition. So economics, economics is a science of wealth. And this definition is called wealth definition. And the definition is given by Adam Smith. 
This definition is given by Adam Smith. He is considered as the father of economics. So Adam Smith is considered as the father of economics. And his famous book is An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nation. This was written in 1776. The book name is An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nation. That was written in 1776. Then the, this is the third definition. This is given by Alfred Marshall. The economics is the study of mankind. The economics is the study of mankind in the ordinary business life. So this definition is called the welfare definition. So economics is the study of mankind in the ordinary business life. So this definition is called the welfare definition, the welfare of the people. This definition is focused on the welfare of the people. So it is called the welfare definition. This was given by Alfred Marshall. So he is considered as a neoclassical economist. The Alfred Marshall is considered as the neoclassical economist. In case of the Adam Smith and his followers is considered as a classical economist. The Adam Smith and uh, his followers are classical economists. But in case of Alfred Marshall, he is considered as a neoclassical economist. And his famous book is The Principles of Economics. This was written in 1890s. So the Alfred Marshall, the famous book is The Principles of Economics. This was written in 1890s. So his definition is called the welfare definition. Then another definition. This was given by Professor Lionel Robinson. The economics is, economics is a science which studies the human behavior. Economics is a science which studies the human behavior as a relationship between the ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. The relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. So economics is a science which studies the human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have some alternative uses. This definition is called a scarcity definition. So this definition is called a scarcity definition. And this definition is given by Professor Lionel Robinson. And his famous book is The Nature and Significance of Economic Science. His famous book is The Nature and Significance of Economic Science. This was written in 1932. In 1932, this book was written. Then another definition, this was given by James Kennys, John Maynard Kennys. The theory of economics is a method rather than a doctrine. An apparatus of mind, a technique of thinking, which helps its professor, processor to draw correct conclusions. This definition is given by James Kennys. Uh, these are the some important definitions relating to economics. These are very important before starting our uh, business economics. So first we learned about the word economia or economicos. From this, this is a Greek word. From that Greek word, the word economics is derived. And after that, we discuss some definitions, some important definitions relating to the economics. Then I am moving to business economics. What is the meaning of business economics? We are applying some economic theories for the business application. We are applying the economic theories to business practice or business applications. It's called the business economics. We are applying the economic theory for the sake of business, for the sake of business. So it is called the business economics. So the business economics is the field of applied economics. So it's a field of applied economics. Applied means the practical oriented economics, applied economics that studies the financial, the organizational, the market related and environmental issues faced by the corporations. So the business economics is a field of applied economics. Business economics is an applied economics, is an application oriented economics that studies 
the financial the organizational the market related and environmental issues faced by corporates or an organization faced by corporates organization or a company this is deal with the business economy this is the business economy so business economy is the application of the economic theory for the sake of the business practices that is business economics then some scope of business economics are there the scope of there are two different scope for business economics the first one is the micro economic scope are there and the second one is the macro economic scope are there so the scope of business economics is divided into the micro level economic scope are there and at the same time there are some macro level economic scope are there the first one is the micro level economic scope the micro economics means the studies the behavior of individual economic unit in case of micro economics we studies the behavior of individual economic unit if we study the behavior of individual economic unit for example a company or a corporate we are studying about a particular company or a corporate it is a micro economic scope it has a micro economic it is says that it said that this is a micro economics so micro economics is behavior of individual economic units we are studying so the micro economics scope of the business economics are the first one is the analysis and forecasting of demand the analysis and forecasting of demand for a particular product or a the particular product of a company so this is focused on a particular product so analysis and focusing of demand focusing on a particular product or particular company so it is a micro level economic scope and the second one is analysis and analysis of production and cost this is also related to a company the production analysis and cost analysis this is conducted based on a micro economic level so this is a micro economic scope and another one is managing the inventory of a company a company has number of inventories it has a raw material finished goods or working progress are there so the managing the inventory is within the company so this is a micro economic scope of the business economics and another one is understanding the markets and pricing strategies we want to understand the markets and also we want to know the pricing strategies for a particular company so this is also focused on a particular company so this is a micro economic scope then another one is allocation of resources we want to allocate the resources properly the resources are the main material and machinery these are the resources so we want to allocate the resources properly we need the micro economic theories and techniques so it is it covered the micro economic scope of the business economics then the sixth one is deciding the capital and the investment we want to decide the capital requirement and we want to know the investment how much investment is required for starting a particular company so this is based on, also focused on a particular company so this is also a micro economic scope and another one is profit and risk analysis the profit and risk analysis for a particular company is done based on the micro economic level so this is also a scope for the micro economic business scope so the scope of business economics is classified into micro level economics and micro economic scope and the macro economic scope some of the micro economic scopes are scopes are uh, one is the analysis and forecasting of demand the second one is the analysis of production and cost then managing the inventory then the fourth one understanding the market and pricing then fifth one the allocation of resources and uh, the fifth one is uh, the sixth one is deciding capital and investment and the seventh one profit and risk analysis these are the different uh, microeconomic scope then we are moving to the macroeconomic scope the macroeconomic studies the economy as a whole in case of macroeconomics we studies the economy as a whole for example we study the national income of a country we study the economic situation of a country these are called the macroeconomic scope or we are able to study the gdp 
or N and B, these are based on the macroeconomic level. So the macroeconomic score for business economics are, the first one is stage of the business. We want to identify the stage of the particular business. Stage means from which stage the business is going on. It is in uh, uh, the recession stage or a boom stage or a decay stage or a, a expansion stage. From which stage the business is going on. We want to identify the stage or the business cycle. It is called the business cycle. We want to know the business cycle. We need the microeconomic theories. So these are the and the scope you now to identify the stage of the particular business or we want to identify the business cycle of the particular business we need the macroeconomic theories then the second one the economic environment we want to identify the economic environment the economy as a whole we want to know the economic situation of the whole country we need the macroeconomic uh, theory so it is a macroeconomic scope for business economics and the third one trends in national income we want to know the trends in national income and the employment rate Again, we use the macroeconomic theories. So the trends in national income and employment rates, we use the macroeconomic theories are used. Then the fourth one, the government's regulation. The government regulation affect the entire industry. The whole uh, nation, the government regulation will affect. So we use uh, the macroeconomic theories for uh, examining the government regulations and the capital market condition. We want to know the capital market condition. Again, we use some macroeconomic theories. So it is come under the macroeconomic scope of a business economics. Then the last one is the socioeconomic and political organizations. We want to know about some organization playing in the market. This, uh, their socio-economic intervention and political intervention we want to know. We again use some microeconomic theories for identifying the business economic situation. So these are the scope of business economics. There are two different scope. Micro level scope are there and macro level scope are there. In case of ma macro level economics, we study the economy as a whole. But in case of the micro level economics, we study the individual economic group. We focused on studying the individual economic group, for example, a company or a corporate. For in case of macro economic, we, uh, we, we study the whole economy. For example, we study the Indian economy, Indian economic situation, Indian national uh, net national income or NNB or NNI or GDP, etc. We, we, we are calculating this based on the macro economic theories. Then I am moving to uh, the objectives of a business firm. The business firm has a number of objectives. There are three major objectives of a business firm. The first one is some economic objectives. A business units has some economic objectives and uh, they have some social objectives are there and they have some national uh, level objectives are there. So each objectives are very important. So the first one is the economic objective of a business unit. The first economic objective is to earning of profit or to earn profit. That is a major objective or maximizing their profit. They are focused on maximizing their profit. Then gaining customers or they are attracting more customers is their economic objective, gaining more customers. Then the, the last one is the optimum use of resources or optimum utilization of the available resources. This is another economic, uh, economic scope for the business firm or a business unit. Then the economic objectives are the earning profit, gaining customers and optimum use of the available resources or the limited resources. Then the, so there are some social objectives are there. The first one is good quality products and services. They want to provide, provide the consumers the good quality product and services. They want to provide the good quality product and services to the customers. And the second one, the maintaining a fair trade practices. They want to maintain a fair trade practice. This is a social objective. And the last one is contribution to the upliftment of the society. In order to contribute, the upliftment of the society is another social objective. 
things. So there are some social objectives are there. The first one is good quality products and services. Want to provide some good quality products and services for the maintenance of the fair trade practices, then contribution to the upliftment of the society. And these are the social objectives. And the last objective is the national level objectives. National level objectives. The first one is creation of employment opportunities. The creation of more employment is a national level objective of a particular business firm. And second one is a social justice. Social justice. That means serve the people or serve the society of the nation without any sort of prejudices and social discrimination. They are serving the people without any sort of prejudice or social discrimination. It is called the social justice of their social justice. It acts as an object of a particular form. Then another one is a contribution to the betterment of society. They want to contribute more to the betterment of the society is a national level objective. And another one is focused on export and reducing the import activities. The focusing on the export of the country and also they are focused on reducing the import to the country. This is another national level objective for a particular firm or a business unit. And the last one is economic and social satisfaction of employees. They want to satisfy the economic and social situation of the employees. This is these are the different national level objectives of a business for the first one is the creation of employment opportunity. Then the second one social justice and the third one contribution to the betterment of the society and the, the fourth one focused on export and reducing the imports. And the last one, economic and social satisfaction of employees. But these are the, the major objectives of a business firm. So the objectives of business firm are the major objectives are the economic objectives are there, some social objectives are there, and some national level objectives are there in a particular business unit. Then we move on to the important area that is demand analysis. What is demand? Demand is an economic principle. Demand is an economic principle referring to the consumer's desire to purchase. But demand is an economic principle referring to the consumer's desire to purchase goods and services. Consumers decide to purchase the goods and services and a willingness to pay a price for a specific goods or services. So demand is an economic principle referring to consumers desire to purchase goods and services and willing to pay a price for specific good or service. So holding all other factors constant and increasing the price of good or service will decrease the quantity demanded and vice versa. So demand is a desire backed by ability and the willingness to pay for a particular goods or service holding all other factors constant and increase in the price of a good or service will decrease the quantity demand if increase in the price of good or service will decrease the quantity demand and vice versa that is a inverse relation price and the quantity de quantity demanded as having some inverse relationship. So demand is a desire backed by ability and willingness to pay for a particular good or service, holding all other uh, factors constant and an increase in the price of good or service will decrease the quantity demanded and vice versa. So now we are moving to the demand analysis. The demand analysis is the process of understanding the customer demand. So the demand analysis is the process of understanding the customer demand for a product or service in target market. So demand analysis is the process of understanding the customer demand for a product or service in a target market. It's called demand analysis. We want to know the customer demand for a product or service in a particular market. 
we use the demand analysis. So it is called the demand analysis. Then law of demand. What is the law of demand? The law of demand states that other factors remain same or other factors being constant. The price and quantity demanded of any good or service are inversely related to each other. So the law of, de the law of demand says that other things remain same or other factors being constant, the price and quantity demanded of a good or service, the price and quantity demanded of a particular good or service are inversely related to each other. The price and quantity demanded are inversely related to each other. This is called the law of demand. So the law of demand says that the price and quantity demanded are inversely related to each other. Uh, when other things remain same because the other factors being constant. When the price of a product increases, the demand for the same product will fall. When the price of a particular product increases, the demand for that product will decrease. This will happen. This is a, say that the law of demand. So the law of demand states that other factors being constant the price and quantity demanded of any good and service are inversely related to each other. When the price of a product increases, the demand for same will fall. Then, what is a demand schedule? The, and the one is, we already discussed the law of demand. Then the next one is the demand schedule. What is the demand schedule? Demand schedule is a table. Demand schedule is a table that shows the quantity demanded of a good or service at different price level. So demand schedule is a table that shows the quantity demanded of a good or service at different the price levels. A demand schedule is a table that shows the quantity demanded of a good or service at a different the price level. Then the another concept is the demand curve. What is demand curve? The demand curve is a graphical representation of the relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded for a given period of time. Or demand curve is a graphical representation of the demand schedule. So demand curve is a graphical representation of the demand schedule. So the demand curve is a graphical representation of the relationship between price of good, the price of good or service and the quantity demanded for a given period of time. Quantity demanded for a given period of time. Do you have any questions regarding in this session, in this area? Hello. Hello. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> this is a demand curve. The x axis shows the quantity demand. Huh? And the y-axis shows the price of a particular commodity. If the price is at P1, the quantity demanded is Q1. If the price is decreased to P2, the quantity demanded is increased to Q2. If the price is again decreased to P3, then the quantity demanded is increased to Q3. So this is a demand curve. So, demand curve is the graphical representation of the demand schedule. Then we are going to the price elasticity of demand. Price elasticity of demand. The elasticity of demand primarily refers to the demand price relationship. It is the demand price relationship. The elasticity of demand says, says the, the, the price demand relationship. And elasticity of demand is an important variation of the concept of demand. 
So the elasticity of demand says that the changes in demand due to the changes in price. So the elasticity of demand uh, is an important variation of the concept of demand. So the demand can be classified as elastic demand, inelastic demand, and unitary elastic demand. So there are three different types of elasticity of demand, or demand can be classified in three different forms. That is elastic demand, inelastic demand, and unitary elastic demand. So the elasticity of demand says that the changes in demand due to the changes in price level. That is the price elasticity of demand. There are three different elasticity of demand or demand elasticity. The first one is elastic, inelastic and the unitary elastic demand are there. Then first one is the elastic demand. What is the elastic demand? Elasticity of demand is a change in the price result in a large change in the quantity demand. Elasticity says that change in demand due to changes in price. In case of elastic demand, the elastic demand says that change in the price result in a large change in the quantity demand. A small change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand. And this is called the elastic demand. This is a situation of an elastic demand. Any small change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand. So an example for the products with an elastic demand is consumer durables. The consumer durable is an example of elastic demand. That means any small change in price create a large demand, create a large demand. These are items, so the consumer durables are the items that are purchased infrequently. We are purchasing the consumer durables, for example, we are purchasing the TV or television or washing machine. These are infrequent purchases are there. So in case of consumer durables, are the, the demand is elastic in nature. These are items that are purchased infrequently, uh, like washing machine or an automobile and can be postponed if the price rises. When the price rises, the consumer postpone this kind of consumer, the purchase of this kind of consumer durables. And when the price fall, the consumer make the purchase. That is the reason for an elastic demand for consumer durables. So elastic demand is a change in price result in a large change in the, large change in the quantity demand. Here the example is consumer durables. In case of consumer durables, a small increase in price result in a, a, a large decrease in the quantity demand and a small a fall in price lead to a large increase in the quantity demand. This creates uh, the elastic demand for consumer durables. The clause substitute for a product affect the elasticity of demand. This is a very important thing. The clause substitute, the availability of clause substitute affect the elasticity of demand. The clause substitute for a product affect the elasticity of demand. It will affect the elasticity of demand. If another product can easily be substituted for a particular product, the consumer will quickly switch to the other product. That is the reason for, that is a substitution effect. When a clause substitute is available, the consumer's demand is shipped from one product to another. This will affect the elasticity of demand. So clause substitute for a product affect the elasticity of demand. The, the demand from one product is shipped to the another substitute product. That is the reason for the clause substitution effect in elasticity of demand. So elastic, elastic demand means any changes in demand due to the elasticity say the changes in demand due to changes in price. So elastic demand means any small changes in demand, changes in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand. So the consumer durable is an example. And then we say what the clause substitute creates some impact on the elasticity of demand. Then we move on to a graphical representation of the elastic demand. This is the graphical representation of elastic demand. This is uh, the, the x-axis represent the quantity purchased and the y-axis represent again the price of the commodity. And the price is at P1, 
the quantity demanded is q1 the quantity demanded is q1 and a price a small decrease in price the price is uh, falling to p2 a small decrease in price create a large increase in the quantity demand a price at p1 the quantity demanded is q1 and the price is decreased to a small decrease happen a falling price a small falling price is happen to p2 this create a large improvement in the quantity demanded the quantity demanded is lead to the q2 a large improvement is there so this is called elastic demand any small change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand any small change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand if the p p1 decrease to p2 a large change is happen to uh, in the quantity demand the q1 in the 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 quantity demand is lead to q2 a large uh, difference is there in the quantity demand that is the elastic demand this is an example of computing the elasticity of demand when the price decreased from 10 dollars per unit to 8 per unit the price is decreased from 10 us dollar to 8 dollars the quantity sold increased from 30 unit to 50 unit a small change in price is there the price is 10 us dollar to 8 us dollar price is decreased from 8 10 to 8 the quantity sold or the quantity demanded is increased from 30 unit to 50 unit a large increase is there 30 units is increased to 50 units and this uh, this lead to the elasticity coefficient of 2.25 this is calculated based on this equation this is the equation of calculating the elastic demand or elasticity of demand is calculated based on this equation that is the q1 minus q2 divided by the q1 plus q2 the whole divided by p1 minus p2 divided by p1 plus p2 this is the equation here p1 is the the initial price level that is 10 us dollars 10 dollars then the p2 the price is changed to p2 level a small change in price is there the p2 changed to 8 us dollars and the quantity demanded at the p1 price level is 30 units 30 units and the quantity demanded at p2 price level is 50 units there is a, a large increase in the quantity demanded so based on this equation we can we can able to get 2.25 this in solving this equation we can we got 2.25 is the elasticity of coefficient or elasticity of demand so this is the equation for calculating the elasticity of demand changes in demand due to changes changes in the quantity demanded due to changes in price we uh, return in q1 minus q2 divided by q1 plus q2 the whole divided by p1 minus p2 divided by p1 plus p2 we got this 2.25 elasticity coefficient then we move on to inelastic demand what is the inelastic demand the inelastic demand is a change in the price inelastic demand is a change in the price result only a small change in the quantity demand there is a change in price but the quantity demanded there is only a small change is happening inelastic demand is a change in price price is changing that result only a small change in the quantity demand in case of elastic demand a small change in price uh, price lead to a large change in the quantity demand but in case of inelastic demand a small change in price or changing price result only a small change in price only a small change in this not price only a small change in the quantity demand that is called inelastic demand so in other words the quantity demand the quantity demanded is not very responsive to the changes in price the quantity demanded is not very responsive to the changes in price that means the price is changing but the quantity demanded is 
a small change is only happening in the quantity demand that is in elastic demand the price is changing but a small change is happening only in the quantity demand that is in elastic demand but in case of elastic demand a small change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand this elastic but it is in in case of inelastic a small change in price a changing price create only a small change in the quantity demand that is a situation the example of the uh, the food the necessities like uh, food the fuel uh, these are uh, the case of the inelastic demand because the, these are the essential item a change in price does not affect the purchasing of the food and fuel the consumer will not reduce their food purchase if food prices are rise that is the situation of inelastic demand so the food and fuel are the example of inelastic demand because the consumer never stop purchasing food and fuel so this is the case of inelastic demand so we already uh, learned about elastic demand and inelastic demand the elasticity says that the changes in demand changes in quantity demanded due to changes in price it is called the elasticity of demand there are three different forms of elasticity of demand elastic demand inelastic demand and unitary unitary elastic demand are there the first we discussed about elastic demand any small change in demand change in price lead to a large change in the quantity demand it is an elastic situation so in case of an inelastic demand any small change in the quantity price of a commodity any change in the price of a commodity it does not affect the quantity demanded or a small change in the quantity demanded is happening so we now move on to <coughs> the graphical representation of the inelastic inelastic demand this is a graphical representation here also the the x axis represents the quantity and the y axis also the price for the particular commodity the price is at p1 the quantity demanded is q1 the price is at uh, p1 the quantity demanded is q1 the price is uh, drastically changed to p2 is decreased to p2 the quantity demanded is only a small change in the quantity demand the quantity demand is increased to only a small change is happening there is a huge decrease in price but the quantity demanded is de increased to q2 or if the price is at p2 the quantity demanded is q2 if the price is increased to p1 the quantity demand is only decreased to q1 level that is a small a change in price is made the change in price does not affect the quantity demanded or the change in price affect only a small change in the quantity demand this is the inelastic demand curve this is an inelastic demand curve in case of inelastic demand this is an example when a price decreased from uh, rupees top dollars to six dollars the price is decreased from tall dollars to six dollars a 50 percentage decrease is there the quantity demanded increased from 40 units to 50 units 40 to 50 unit the elasticity coefficient is 0 0.33 this is also computed based on the similar equation this already we are discussed the q1 minus q2 divided by q1 plus q2 this is the equation for elasticity of demand this is this is used for computing the elasticity of demand based on this computation we got that 0.33 is the elasticity of demand that means a drastic change in price the price is at a tall us dollar now change it to six dollars a drastic change in price is happen but it does not affect the quantity demand only a small change in the quantity demand a small change in the quantity demand is happening that is called the inelastic demand this is a situation of an inelastic demand then the last one is a unitary elasticity unitary elasticity of demand if the elasticity coefficient is equal to one if the elasticity coefficient is equal to one the demand is unitary elastic that means any changes in price create an equal change in the quantity demand changes in create uh, price create an equal change in the quantity demand and it is a situation of unitary 
elasticity. The, if the elasticity coefficient is equal to 1, the demand, the demand is unitary elastic. The demand change in proportion to change in price. That means the, the demand change in proportion to the change in price. The demand change in proportion to the change in price or any changes in demand create an equal change in the quantity demand. That is called the unitary elasticity. For example, a 10 percentage change in the quantity demand that divided by a 10 percentage change in change is none. That 10 by 10 we got 1. That is the elasticity coefficient is equal to 1. This means a, a 1 percentage change in the quantity demand and 1 percentage change in the price will happen. 1 by 1 we got 1 equal to 1 elasticity coefficient. We, <coughs> that means 10 percentage change in the quantity demand and create an equal change in the price. The 10 percentage change in the price level create an equal 10 percentage change in the quantity demand. So the unitary elastic, the elasticity coefficient always become uh, 1 or equal to 1. This is the unitary elastic situation of uh, demand curve. This is here also, these are the different price level, V1 and P2, and Q1 and Q2 are the different quantity demanded. A small change in price, the P1 is decreased to P2, an equal change in the U2, equal change in the quantity demanded is happening. Any small change in price create an equal change in the quantity demanded. Here P1 to P2, here Q1 to Q2, an equal change will happen. This is the case of a unitary elasticity of demand. So we already learned about elasticity of demand and three different kinds of elasticity. Uh, elasticity of demand and unitary elasticity of demand and the inelastic demand we already discussed. Then we move on to the factors affecting the price elasticity of demand. What are the factors affecting the price elasticity of demand? The first factor is the nature of the commodity. The nature of the commodity directly affects the price elasticity of a demand. In the case of the commodity like the food grains, vegetables, medicines, etc., its demand is generally inelastic. <coughs> generally inelastic, that means consumers uh, does not consider the price level. They this, this these are the necessary items they want. Uh, at, at every price level. So these are the inelastic in nature and it is required for the human survival and its demand does not fluctuate much with the change in price. So it demand does not fluctuate with the change in price. So it is an inelastic situation in case of food grains, vegetables and medicine. So this will affect the price, it does not affect the price elasticity of demand. Then the second one, when a commodity like a fan refrigerator its demand is generally elastic as a consumer can postpone its consumption so these are not a regular consumption so if the price is increasing drastically the consumer will reduce the purchase if the price is decreased drastically the consumer will purchase a very high manner they are purchasing the more quantity so this either in case of the consumer durables, the, 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 this is the case of an elastic demand. And the second one is the availability of the substitute. That is the availability of substitute products will also affect the elasticity of demand. The commodities with the few or no substitute like wheat and salt have less price elasticity of demand. But in case of the commodities like uh, the no substitute, uh, so, no substitute less. For example, the wheat and salt have less price elasticity of demand. Then another one, another uh, the factors affecting the price elasticity of demand are the income level of consumers. So the elasticity of demand for a commodity is generally less for higher income group in comparison to the people with the low income. So in case of higher income group, their they are not bothered about the price level changes. They always purchase the similar quantity. But in case of the law in the group, they are also more bothered about the price level changes. So the income level of consumers also affect the elasticity of 
demand and another one is the level of price affecting the level of price will also affect the price elasticity of demand and the postponement of consumption sometimes the consumption the commodities with the demand is not urgent how highly elastic demand as their consumption can be postponed in case of an increase in their price however the commodities with urgent demand like life saving drugs how in elastic demand so the commodity the urgency of that particular commodity create uh, some price elasticity that affect the price elasticity of demand so the postponement of consumption is an uh, is an another factor that affecting the price elasticity of demand and another one is the number of usage number of usage is also that means alternative uses of the particular commodity also affect the price elasticity of demand and the, uh, the seventh one is the share in the total expenditure and the share in the total expenditure of the particular con uh, particular consumer is also affect the price elasticity of demand and the final one is the habits of a particular consumer will affect in case of alcohol or cigarette they are always purchasing they never uh, drop its purchasing when the price level changes they does not affect the purchasing habits of this commodities like uh, the alcohol and cigarettes so this will affect the price elasticity of demand but these are the different factors affecting the price elasticity of demand then we are moving to an important topic that is the relationship between uh, AR, average revenue and marginal revenue. This is very important. The relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue. Here the average revenue means the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold. So average revenue means the total revenue, we divide the total revenue by the total quantity sold. Then the another concept is marginal revenue. The change in the total revenue uh, from an additional unit sold is called the marginal revenue. So average revenue means the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold, we got average revenue. And in case of marginal re revenue, any change in the total revenue from an additional unit sold, we got the marginal revenue. For more information, I move on to a PDF file. So the relationship between the average revenue and marginal revenue. A firm, the important aim of a particular firm is to maximize their profit. So the, the important objective of a particular firm is to maximize their profit. So profit is the total revenue minus total cost. So pro we got the profit from, if we got profit, we uh, the total revenue minus the total cost, we got the profit. So an important objective of a firm is to maximize the profit. So in order to get the profit, we, uh, we we minus the total revenue minus the total cost we got the profit and average revenue means the total revenue divided by the quantity sold the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold we got average revenue so the average revenue means the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold then marginal revenue the change in the total revenue from an additional unit sold. So marginal revenue, any change in the total revenue from an additional unit sold. From one additional unit sold, what is the change in the total revenue? This is computed based on some equation. This can uh, discussed in this uh, some with some examples there. For example, in case of uh, a firm called Waterline Farm Direct. This is the name of a particular company. This example is uh, taken from a foreign book. So, uh, because, because of that name, the Waterline Farm Diary, the produces a quantity of milk cube. The Waterline Farm Diary, a company, 
they produces a quantity of milk q they produces a quantity of milk q and sell each unit at the market price p so they produce a quantity uh, of milk q and they sell each unit at a market price called p they sell at a p price level the farm's total revenue is p into q the total revenue means the total price is the, the quantity into the total quantity produced into the price the price of each unit they got the total revenue for that particular company for example if a liter of milk sell at the 0.35 cents us this symbol is for euro euro 0.35 euro cents of euro 0.35 cents and the farm sell 10000 liters per day so each liter 0.35 cents and a farm can able to sell 10000 liters of milk each day its total revenue is 10000 into 0.35 we got 3500 euro per day euro per day this is the the farm's total revenue so the total revenue is equal to the total production or the total quantity sold in the uh, the price each price of each unit sold the price of each unit sold they got the farm's total revenue here the price of milk is based on the market condition this will the price is calculated the company calculated the price 0.35 cents that is based on the market condition there are some market conditions are there here the price of milk is based on some market conditions this means the price of milk does not depend on the quantity of output. So the price is depend on only the market condition. It does not affect the quantity of output. It does not affect the quantity of output. If the output is increasing, the price is remain same because some market conditions are there. So that means the, the price of milk does not depend on the quantity of output if the water line double that is the if the water line means the particular company the water line double the amount of milk they produce the price of milk remains same because it does not affect any other factors the price is determined only based on the market condition and the price is remains same 0.35 cents and their total revenue double that means if the company producing 10000 liters of milk uh, in a day they can able to sell at 0.35 cents each liter they can able to make 3500 us euro per day if the farm double their production the 10000 to 2000 20000 10000 to 20000 there uh, the price is remain same due to the market condition the price is remain same 0.35 cents so they can able to make a more profit the revenue will increase so their uh, total revenue doubles their total revenue doubles as a result the total revenue is proportional to the amount of output this is very important the total revenue is proportional to the amount of output total revenue is proportional to the amount of output these are the some calculations of the total revenue the average revenue and the marginal revenue of that particular water water line farm dairy company so this is a this is a computation of the total revenue average revenue and the marginal revenue this is the quantity sold q q represent the quantity sold in liters one liters to eight liters this is a price level the price is fixed based on the market condition no other factors the quantity demanded or the the quantity sold does not affect the price level the price is constant here the price is constant 0.35 cents of euro this symbol is euro this example is taken from a foreign book that is why the euro symbol is used 0.35 cents the price is constant based on the market condition and this is the total revenue this is the total revenue the total revenue is equal to p into q that is the total quantity into price, price of each quantity. Quantity into price, we got the total revenue. That is 1 liter in 0 0.35, 0 0.35 is a total revenue. The 2 liters in 0 0.35, again 0 0.70 is a total revenue.
total revenue this way we compute the total revenue for each quantity sold the price is same but total revenue we compute the total quantity sold in the uh, the total quantity sold in the price we got the total revenue this is the equation for calculating the total revenue the based on the total revenue we move on to the average revenue the average revenue means the total revenue divided by quantity total quantity total revenue divided by the total quantity we got the average revenue here the total revenue is 0.35 here in the case of the first 1 liter production the total revenue is 0.35 divided by the total quantity total quantity is 1 liter 0.35 divided by 1 again we got average revenue 1 liters here average revenue is same in case of the second example the the, the second quantity is production is increased to 2 liters and the, again the price is 0.35 So the total revenue is 0.70. 0.35 into 2, we got 0.70. So the 0.70 is the total revenue. We compute the average revenue. The total revenue 0.70 divided by the total quantity. Total quantity is 2. Again, we got 0.35. That is the average revenue. This way, we compute the average revenue. The average revenue remains same 0.35. 0.35. Euro, one three five cents, one three five cents of euro. Then we move on to the marginal revenue. How to compute the marginal revenue? The marginal revenue equal to the total revenue, the changes in the total revenue. Marginal revenue means the delta. This is the symbol of delta. Delta represent the changes. The changes in the total revenue divided by another delta, the change in the total quantity. change in the total revenue divided by change in the total quantity we got the marginal revenue change in the total con uh, total revenue divided by change in the total quantity so change in the total revenue <coughs> total revenue is 0.35 only 0.35 is a total revenue total revenue uh, divided by 0.35 divided by change in the total quantity Ch change in the total quantity again one we got 0.35 so marginal revenue this way we compute the marginal revenue so this is an example of calculating the total revenue average average revenue and marginal revenue so once again here we discussed about uh, what is profit profit is a total revenue minus total cost then average revenue the average revenue is the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold then marginal revenue the changes in the total revenue changes in the total revenue from an additional unit sold change that is called the marginal revenue this is computed based on this equation marginal revenue is the change in the total revenue divided by the change in the total quantity and the average revenue we compute based on average revenue equal to total revenue divided by the total quantity sold and the total revenue we computed based on price in the total quantity sold this way we compute total revenue average revenue and marginal revenue then the above example this example lead to two different questions the first one is how much revenue does the farm receive for a typical liter of milk a 1 liter of milk and how much additional revenue that is a marginal revenue how much additional revenue does the farm receive if it increase the production of milk by 1 liter how much additional revenue does the farm receive if if uh, their income if their uh, if it increases the production by 1 uh, liter this can again computed based on an uh, based on an example the same uh, kind of example that is profit maximization example here also the quantity demanded these are the quantity demanded or quantity produced this is the total revenue already computed total revenue this is the total cost this is the profit this is the total cost and total profit we computed again the quantity demanded is in 1000 uh, liters these are in thousands 
up to uh, 8000 liters these are in thousands liters in thousands and total revenue is in again in us sorry in euro and uh, if one uh, uh, 1000 quantity produced 1000 quantity of uh, 1000 liters of milk we produce we can able to make a total revenue of 350 euro and again 2000 liters we are producing again our uh, profit is in, our total revenue is increased to 7 700 euro this way the total revenue is improving then this is a total cost again we uh, this uh, in case of zero liters if we are producing no liters no production if, if we have no production again the total revenue is nil there is nothing is produced the total revenue is nil but the total cost is again 200 total cost is 200 that is a fixed cost 200 not 200 uh, euro 200 is a fixed cost so the profit means total revenue minus total cost this is the total revenue zero minus 200 we got a uh, negative 200 that is a loss it got a loss in case of next cost uh, situation that is we produce uh, uh, 1000 liters the total revenue is 350 euro and the total cost is uh, 250 then the profit is 350 minus 250 uh, euro we got 100 is the profit and uh, the marginal revenue equal to changes in the total revenue divided by total quantity changes in the total revenue divided by total quantity this is already we discuss again this is a equation for calculating the marginal revenue this way we compute this marginal revenue and this is a marginal cost marginal cost is a change in the total cost divided by change in the total quantity we got marginal cost marginal cost is computed by some change in the total quantity divided the total cost divided by change in the total quantity if, if we compute this we got this kind of marginal cost and change in profit marginal revenue minus marginal cost is the change in profit the marginal revenue minus marginal cost we got change in profit and up to up to the 3000 liters we got uh, up to 2000 liters we got a marginal uh, profit a change in the profit a positive profit is there but if the product if, the, if we are producing additional unit the marginal revenue change in the profit is a negative in manner this is a change in profit but this way we can able to compute the marginal revenue the marginal cost and the change in the profit of a particular commodity so the marginal revenue so another one is therefore in a perfectly competitive market a firm's average revenue equals the price of the goods so the average revenue equals the price of a good in case of a perfect uh, competitive market the marginal revenue which is the change in the total revenue from the sale of each additional unit of output marginal revenue means any change in the total revenue from the sale of each additional unit of output the sale of one more liter of milk add 0.35 to the total revenue therefore the marginal revenue is also 0.35 cents of euro this is the situation so the total revenue is p in the q p is fixed for competitive form So, because based on the the price is uh, fixed based on the market condition that is a quantity firm therefore when q rises by one unit uh, the quantity production is Im- improved to one unit the total revenue rises by p euros price is increase with the total revenue rises by p euros for competitive firm the marginal revenue equal to the price of the good the marginal revenue equal to the price in case of competitive firm the marginal revenue equals the price of the goods so this is a relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue so once again average revenue is the total revenue divided by the total quantity sold and average revenue 
is the change in the total revenue from an additional unit sold. Then the interrelationship between revenue concept, that is average revenue and marginal revenue. The average revenue will be decreasing. If the average revenue will be decreasing, when the marginal revenue less than the average revenue. The average revenue decreasing when the marginal revenue less than the average revenue. And the marginal revenue is falls rapidly than average revenue. The marginal revenue falls rapidly than the average revenue. Then the total revenue will be increasing so long as the marginal revenue is positive. This is the relationship between uh, the revenue concept, different average revenue, marginal revenue, and the total revenue concept. Then the average revenue will, uh, will be decreasing when the marginal revenue less than the average revenue. Then another one, the marginal revenue is false rapidly than the average revenue. Then the total revenue will be increasing so long as marginal re revenue is positive. Then if the marginal revenue is negative, the total revenue will be falling. The total revenue will be falling. When if the marginal revenue is negative, the total revenue will be falling. These are the uh, then the marginal revenue is zero, the total revenue is maximum. These are the different situation. Then the relationship between the price elasticity of elasticity marginal revenue, elasticity of marginal revenue and the total revenue. The relationship between price elasticity of marginal revenue and the total revenue. When the price elasticity is greater than unity, that is price elasticity is greater than unity. Unity elasticity means an equal change in price lead to an equal quantity demand. And but the elasticity is greater than unity means there is an elastic demand. The marginal revenue will be positive. The marginal revenue will be positive. The total revenue will increase if the price is reduced. The total revenue will increase if the price is also reducing. This is a relationship. And another one, when the elasticity is unity, the marginal revenue will be zero and the total revenue remains unaffected by the change in price. When the elasticity is unity, the marginal revenue will be zero and the total revenue remains unaffected by the change in price. Then another one is when the price elasticity is less than unity, the marginal revenue will be negative and the total revenue increases with the uh, with an increase in the price and decrease with the uh, decrease in the price. So when the price elasticity is less than unity, the marginal revenue will be negative and the total revenue increases with increase in price and decreases with the decrease in price. So these are the relationship between price elasticity, uh, elasticity and marginal revenue and total revenue. When the price elasticity is greater than unity, the marginal revenue will be positive the total revenue will be will increase if the price is reduced. When the elasticity is unity, the marginal revenue will, will be zero and the total revenue uh, remains unaffected by the change in price. When the price elasticity is less than unity, the marginal revenue will be negative and the total revenue increases with increase in the price and decrease with the decrease in price. These are the situations. Now, these are the different concepts relating to the price elasticity of demand. Then we move on to the income elasticity of demand. First, we discussed about the price elasticity of demand. That means uh, changes in uh, demand due to changes in price. That is called the price elasticity. Changes in demand due to the changes in price. Then we move on to the income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of demand measure how the quantity demand. The income elasticity of demand measures how the quantity demand changes as a consumer income changes. That means it is computed as the percentage change in quantity demand divided by the percentage change in income. 
that is income elasticity. The percentage change in commodity demand are due to percentage change in income. That is changing changing demand due to changes in income. That is the uh, that is we are able to say that the income elasticity of demand. The percentage change in quantity demand on based on the percentage change in income. Then uh, there are different types of income elasticity of demand are there. The first one is zero income elasticity of demand. There are number of income, uh, three more uh, income elasticity of demand are there. The first one is zero income elasticity of demand. It refers to the situation where change in income does not affect the quantity demand. So the type of income elasticity, the first one is zero income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity say that changes in demand due to changes in income, change in income. So zero income elasticity of demand say that it refers to the situation where the change in income, the change in income does not affect the quantity demanded. Change in income does not affect the quantity demanded. It is say that zero income elasticity. Change in income does not affect the quantity demanded. In case of negative income elasticity, if an increase in the consumer's income, if an increase in the consumer's income causes a reduction in the quantity demanded, if an increase in the consumer's income cause, causes a reduction in the quantity demand of a particular product, the income elasticity of a product is negative. The income elasticity of inferior goods will be always negative. That means if the inferior goods, in, in the case of inferior goods, if a particular person income is increasing, they shifted their demand of inferior goods to superior goods. So the income elasticity of inferior goods will, uh, will be always negative. It is called a negative income elasticity. If an increase in the consumer's income causes a reduction in the quantity demand. It is a negative income elasticity. If the income increasing, the demand also decreasing. The demand is decreasing. This is happening. So it is called a negative income elasticity. This is in the case of inferior goods. If one particular person income is increasing, he shifted his demand from the inferior goods to more superior goods. This way that the this will reduce the demand for inferior goods. This lead to negative income elasticity to the inferior goods. It is a situation. So here income elasticity of demand are there. Negative income elasticity of demand are there. Then another one is the positive income elasticity of demand are there. This is opposite to the negative income elasticity of demand. The income elasticity of normal goods as well as the superior goods is positive. The income elasticity of normal goods as well as the superior goods is positive because the customer buy more and more when their income increases. For example, in case of inferior goods, if the income increases, they shifted their demand from the inferior goods to superior goods. This will help to the superior goods. This will affect the superior goods demand increasing. So it is called the positive income elasticity. If income increasing, a particular consumer income is increasing, he shifted from the inferior goods to superior goods. This will affect a positive effect to the, uh, in, uh, the superior goods. So it is called the positive income elasticity. It is called the positive income elasticity. So uh, the income elasticity of demand says that the changes in demand due to changes in income is, it is called the, the elasticity of the uh, income elasticity of demand. So there are different types of income elasticity of demand up there. The first one is zero income elasticity of demand. It refers to the situation where change in income does not affect the quantity demand. The change in <coughs> change in income, it does not affect the quantity demand. It is a situation of zero income elasticity. But in case of negative income elasticity, the change in income, change in income reduce the quantity demanded. It is in the case of inferior goods, the change in income reduce the quantity demanded. 
his income is a, a particular consumer income is increasing he shifted his uh, consumption from consumption of inferior goods to superior goods this will reduce the uh, the the demand for the inferior goods this will affect as a negative income elasticity to that particular product same way there is an opposite to negative income elasticity it create a positive income elasticity of demand in the, this is happening in the case of superior goods when the income is improving uh, the, the consumer ship their uh, ship their consumption pattern from the inferior goods to superior goods this will affect the superior goods demand uh, in this very high this create a positive income elasticity of demand then another one is cross price elasticity of demand the third different concept the cross price elasticity of demand cross price elasticity of demand we already discussed about price elasticity of demand then the price elasticity says that changes in the quantity demanded due to changes in price the income elasticity says that the changes in the quantity demanded due to changes in income of a particular consumer or customer then the another one is the cross price elasticity of demand cross price elasticity of demand in case of the cross price elasticity of demand measure how the quantity demanded of one good change as the price of another goods changes that means cross elasticity related to two products the cross price elasticity demand measures how quantity demanded of one good change the price of another goods changes the price change of one good, uh, one particular commodity how it affect the price, the quantity demanded of a, another commodity it, it, this is called the cross price elasticity of demand it is calculated as the percentage change in the quantity demanded of the first goods the percentage change in the quantity demanded of the first good divided by the percentage change in the quantity demanded of the second goods that means how the percentage change in the uh, change in a particular good affect the percentage change in another good that is called uh, the cross price elasticity of demand this is computed based on the percentage change in the quantity demanded of the first good divided by the percentage change in the price change in the price of the second good so these are then uh, whether the cross price elasticity is a positive or negative number depend on whether the two goods are substitute or complement so the cross price elasticity is positive. sometimes it may be positive or negative this is based on uh, the the substitution and the complement complement goods in case of substitute goods or complement goods this will happen then we move on to consumer and consumer behavior this is an another uh, topic in your uh, net exam syllabus the uh, then first uh, what is consumer the consumer is a person consumer is a person who purchases goods and services for personal use so consumer is a person who purchases the goods and services for his personal use then the consumer behavior are all the aspects that affect the consumer search selection and purchase of product so consumer behavior are the aspects that affect the consumers search selection and purchase of product hello 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 yes sir ningalku follow cheyan pattunnundo avade hmm ഇത് നമ്മുടെ ഇതൊരു തിയറിറ്റിക്കൽ പേപ്പറാണ് അപ്പൊ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഇതിനകത്ത് ഒരുപാട് കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഇതിനകത
എന്റെ ഉദ്ദേശം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വളരെ പെട്ടെന്ന് തന്നെ ഇതിന്റെ ഒരു കൺസെപ്റ്റൽ അവയർനെസ് തരിക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഞാൻ നോക്കുന്നത് എനിക്കറിയാം അത് കുറെ ബോറിംഗ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സാധനമാണ് അത് എനിക്ക് തന്നെ അറിയാം പക്ഷെ വേറെ നിവൃത്തിയില്ല എങ്ങനെയെങ്കിലും ഒരു രണ്ട് സെക്ഷൻ കൊണ്ട് ഇത് തീർക്കണമെന്നാണ് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ വളരെ ഫാസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് പോകുന്നത് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നത് കുറച്ചെങ്കിലും ഒക്കെ മനസ്സിലായിട്ടുണ്ടാകും തോന്നുന്നു ഞാനൊരു കാര്യം ചെയ്യാം ഇത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് കുറച്ച് നോട്ട്സ് ഞാൻ അയച്ചു തരാം ഇതിന് കുറച്ച് നോട്ട്സ് ഒക്കെ അയച്ചു തരാം എൻ്റെ കയ്യിലുള്ളതൊക്കെ അയച്ചു തരാം ഇത് എളുപ്പമാണ് ഈ പ്രശ്നമൊന്നുമില്ല ഇപ്പൊ ഞാൻ ഇനി തൊട്ട് അടുത്ത ടോപ്പിക്കിലേക്ക് പോകാമെന്നാണ് വിചാരിച്ചത് പക്ഷെ നമുക്ക് സമയം ഏകദേശം ഒരു പന്ത്രണ്ട് മണിക്ക് ആറായി ഇപ്പൊ ഞാൻ ഒരു കാര്യം ചെയ്യാം ഞാൻ നമ്മൾ ഇന്ന് ഡിസ്കസ് ചെയ്ത് കുറച്ച് മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യനിലേക്ക് പോകാം അനപ്പോട്ടെ Now I am moving to uh, some multiple choice questions based on the today's uh, discussion. And after that, uh, any doubt uh, you can ask uh, directly to me. Your voice is breaking. I will... At present, are you audible? Now audible? Hello? sometimes it's audible but sometimes it's breaking oh some network issues are there i am using mobile internet that is a problem okay i think now i am audible okay yeah yeah it's now okay sir now i am moving to some multiple choice questions based on uh, the current discussion uh, this will help you for your exam because uh, our exam is uh, ob- uh, not uh, descriptive it is an objective type so we discuss some objective type question is necessary these are some multiple choice questions the first one is the law of demand is uh, i think all are visible the law of demand states that states with the increase in price there is a decrease in the quantity demand or increase in the quantity demand or decrease in demand or increase in demand the law of demand says that an increase in price decrease the quantity demand so the first one is our answer the law of demand states that with an increase in price there is a decrease in quantity demand this is our first question then the second one in case of an inferior goods inferior goods and superior goods are there in case of an inferior good the income elasticity of demand is positive zero negative or infinite this is another question in case of inferior goods the income elasticity the income elasticity means changes in the quantity demanded due to change in income when when the income rises what happen into inferior goods the inferior goods demand is reducing that is a negative situation lead to a negative elasticity income elasticity negative income elasticity in case of inferior goods because if in case of inferior goods on particular person income is increasing he shifted from the inferior goods to superior goods this will reduce the demand of the inferior goods <coughs> inferior goods this lead to a negative income elasticity so in case of inferior good the income elasticity of demand is negative always negative then the third one is increase in demand can occur due to increase in income of the consumer increase in demand can occur due to increase in income of the consumer decrease in the price of complementary good increase in the price of substitute all of this once once again increase in the demand can occur when the demand of a particular product increasing 
due to increase in the income of the consumer if a particular consumer income is increasing he directly uh, increase the uh, his demand he directly increase his demand and in case of second one decrease in the price of complementary goods the complementary goods price is decreasing this also increase the demand of a particular product and another one increase in the price of a substitute this will uh, improve the demand for a particular product so all of these are increase the demand for a particular product so increase in demand can occur due to the increase in the income of the consumer is right decrease in the price of the complementary goods is right and increase in the price of substitute is also happening so all of these are uh, increase the demand for a particular product then another one a fall in price of a commodity a fall in price of a particular commodity lead to a shift in demand a fall in price of a commodity lead to a shift in demand a fall in demand a rise in consumers real income and the last one a fall in the consumers real income once again a fall in the price of a commodity a fall in the price of a commodity lead to a shift in demand a fall in demand a rise in the consumers real income a rise in the consumers real income a fall in the consumers real income here a rise in the consumers real income is happening a fall in the price of a commodity straight away this will help uh, the consumers real income the real income is improving that is the right answer then another question is movement along the demand curve illustrates what illustrate the demand curve the movement along the demand curve illustrate what the shift in the dim, uh, the quantity demanded complement effect change in the quantity demanded income effect here the demand curve represent the change in the quantity demand the demand curve illustrate the change in the quantity demand then we move on to and the question that is the price of a product increased by 22 percentage the price of a particular product increased to 22 percentage and the quantity demanded falls by 25 percentage this indicates that the demand is elastic inelastic unitary elastic and perfectly elastic right? the price of a product increased by 22 percentage and the quantity demanded falls by 25 percentage a change in price 22 percent change in change quantity demanded for change in price lead to a 25 percentage fall or change in the quantity demanded this is the case of an elastic demand this is an elastic situation a small change in the quantity demanded so small change in price lead to a larger or a larger change in the quantity demanded the 22 percentage change lead to a 25 percentage change in the quantity demand that is the case of elastic demand then the demand curve is Before always can you please explain sir? hello sir, sir what is mean by perfectly elastic hello i cannot able to hear you hello hello sorry i cannot able to hear you Hello? Yeah. Sir. Hello, sir. What ah. do you mean by perfectly elastic? What do you mean by price elasticity? Perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic means any small change in price a small change in price create an equal or create so sorry it is a unitary elastic perfectly elastic i will uh, explain in the next class because i cannot work on that i will explain the next class perfect elastic and explain the next class in case of elastic inelastic and unitary elastic i explained today perfect elastic and explain the next class okay
then i move on to the seventh question the demand curve the demand curve is always a straight level curve a irregular in curve or upward sloping curve a downward sloping curve a, a demand curve is a downward sloping curve we already know, uh, see some demand curve this is a downward sloping curve then we move on to which of the following is a complement product to peanut butter this is a, a, a general type question which of the following is a complement product to the peanut butter the first one is uh, the sugar some jelly or mustard or soda here the jelly is used for some making some a creamy product for making some cake or something like that so which of the following is a complement product to peanut butter the peanut butter is also a creamy one we are used for some kind of a jam or something like that similar product is here the jelly so jelly is a complement to the peanut butter this is a or example of a general type of question and another one the law of demand is measured from the perspective of consumer in the perspective of shopkeeper in the case of a wholesaler in, ca in case of manufacturer in uh, which perspective we define the law of demand in case of consumer or in case of shopkeeper or in case of a wholesaler or in case of a manufacturer here we uh, use uh, consumer is used for the law of demand law of demand we focused on making the we are purely focused on consumers perspective then uh, the tenth one goods for which the demand goes down when the income goes up are called public goods inferior goods normal goods and uh, private goods then with the goods for which the demand goes down when income goes upward a particular person income is increasing the demand of a particular product is decreasing or downward trend that see a decreasing trend or downward trend this is in the case of inferior goods because if income increasing the consumer shift from the inferior goods to superior goods so inferior goods is a answer for that question the good for which the demand goes down when income goes up are called inferior goods <coughs> then we move on to the 11th question demand for electricity is elastic the demand for electricity is elastic because it is very expensive it has a number of clause substitute it has alternative uses none of the above. for example in case of uh, the demand for electricity the electricity the demand is elastic any small change in uh, change in the a fall in price of electricity this will increase a huge improvement in the consumption pattern uh, because it has alternative usage if you are use, number of using uh, electricity, electricity has number of usage if you are using more uh, air condition if you are using more uh, fan or something like that if the fall in price of electricity we we will improve our uh, consumption pattern so it, it because it has alternative usage is there so based on alternative usage demand for electricity electricity is elastic then the next question if more is demanded at the same price or same quantity at a higher price if more is demand sir question 11 can you explain the demand for electricity is elastic elastic demand means a, any small change in price create a large change in the quantity demanded that is the elastic demand so in case of electricity it has number of alternative usages there number of alternative usages there if price of electricity is increasing price of electricity increasing we reduce its usage because it has number of usage we are using for lighting we are using for air conditioning we are using for another usage is there a water pumping or something like that we reduce the all usage when the price is increasing so this will affect the elasticity of demand of the electricity if the price is reducing 
or fall in price of the uh, electricity this will uh, increase the usage the reason is that because number of usage we use more uh, you know, water pumping we use more uh, lighting we use more air, air, air conditioning or uh, other facilities this way the uh, we use alternative usages there for electricity this will increase a large improvement in the usage so that is why the electricity is an elastic in nature if the demand is elastic in nature so the electricity the demand is elastic due to it has number of alternative uses clear okay 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 sir okay. then the next question is if more is demanded at the same time more is demanded at same price or same quantity at a higher price if more is demanded at the same price or same quantity at a higher price this fact of demand is known as extension in demand increase of demand contraction of demand de decrease of demand this is an increase of demand that means more is demanded at the same price more is demanded at the same price or same quantity at the higher price more is demanded at the same price at the same price we um, demanded more goods demand is high same price we demanded more goods demand is high and the and the high, um, or same quantity same quantity at higher price the price will increase again increasing but we are purchasing the same quantity this is a situation of an increase of demand this is an increase of demand if we purchase more quantity at the same price or same quantity at the higher price same quantity at the higher price this is a situation of increase of demand i think clear if more demanded at the same price or same quantity at the higher price this is a situation of increase of demand this is an increase of demand situation then i am moving to another question that is the demand for a commodity the demand for a commodity is said to be elastic the demand for a particular commodity is said to be elastic if the total amount spent on the commodity is less when the price is low than the price is uh, 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 price is low than when the price is high the same whether the price is high or low more when the price is low low th uh, low than when the price is high or now the demand for a commodity is said to be elastic if the total amount spent on the commodity is more when the price is low than when the price is high that is the situation so c is the answer the demand for a commodity is said to be elastic if the total amount spend on the commodity is more the total amount spend on the commodity is more commodity is more when the price is low than when the price is high then the next question is <coughs> other things being equal a decrease in demand can be caused by a rise in the price of the commodity a rise in the income of the consumer a fall in the price of the commodity a fall in the income of the consumer other uh, things being equal other things remain same a decrease in demand a decrease in demand can be caused by a fall in the income of the consumer other things remain constant but the demand is decreasing price is constant the income is constant and all other factors are constant but the demand can decrease the demand is decreasing this is only because of a fall in the income of the consumer other things being equal other things the price or income level these are the other factor these are remain same a decrease in demand demand of a particular product is decreasing this is caused only by a fall in the income of the consumer the consumer does not have enough income for purchasing this will reduce the income of the 
this will reduce the demand for that particular product when the price is decreasing or increasing the, the consumer income is very important then the another question <coughs> if the income elasticity of demand is greater than unity if the income elasticity of demand is greater than unity the commodity is a necessity a luxury an inferior good a non related good if the income elasticity of demand is greater than unity the income elasticity of demand is greater than unity the income elasticity of demand is greater than unity means the income elasticity is higher the commodity is a luxury commodity in case of luxury goods or inferior goods and superior goods you have keep in mind the inferior goods and superior goods actually means an inferior goods that is why the income elasticity de uh, demand is greater than the unity in the income elasticity is higher than unity or in the case of a luxury goods if a particular person income is improving he go for luxury items or inferior goods luxury item so this will affect the luxury commodity today i'm any questions regarding the today's presentation uh, please ask i will clarify it because now the time is about 12 15 please ask your doubts in today's section we discussed about the meaning and scope of business economics the objectives of a business firm, the demand analysis, law of demand, then elasticity of demand and its measurement, then the relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue. The next uh, day, uh, the next session we discussed about the consumer behavior. Up to relationship between average revenue and marginal revenue we discussed today. Any questions? Any questions? Hello? Hello? Participants can ask questions now. Okay, since there's no doubt, we've come to the end of the session. So good afternoon all, okay. I'm Jibira Zeje, uh, S2 MCOM GBO student and secretary of the Commerce Club. So uh, it's actually a great honor and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on another successful day of NTNH JR of coaching organized by the Commerce Club, University of Kerala, Kariwatam campus. Amidst the pandemic situation, we are glad that we could complete another successful chapter of the coaching. At first, I thank our resource person, Dr. Amal Kumar, PDF scholar, University of Kerala, Kariwatam campus, for enlightening us with his commendable talk on business economics. Thank you, sir, for clearing our concepts and enhancing your understanding pertaining to the topic. Uh, like you have already covered the code, uh, the main core subjects, almost the core subjects of, uh, you know, of the topic and uh, it was really uh, very uh, wonderful sessions uh, because we could clearly understand uh, what all you have taught and everything, every topics which you have covered. We, we got a really good idea. So thank you so much. And I would also like to extend a special thanks uh, for sharing the important MCQ questions. Uh, thank you so much. Okay.
thank you uh, we will continue in our uh, next session yes okay. sir yeah the okay. rest portion will be continuing in our next session okay. uh, so next i would like to express my gratitude to all the participants for your keen attention so from the beginning you have already uh, you have all been listening uh, very keenly thank you so much for that and we'll have a next session on data interpretation handled by dr arathi c tomorrow at 6 pm so i request all of your uh, attention all of your participation for tomorrow session 2 so once again on behalf of the commerce club i extend my gratitude thank you stay safe stay healthy okay. Okay. thank you